late in the period, so you know, I remember picking up the puck and thinking there's probably not a lot of time to make a play, so I was just trying to get into the zone and maybe get a shot off quick. So the way it ended up I was able to kind of find some ice, and it's one of those plays that doesn't happen too often, but you know, fun one to score. Leave the puck for Sidney Crosby. Gonna try and score late. Goes right through everybody. Right to the net. Back in the net. Oh, what a goal by Sidney Crosby. And you would have to be here to believe it. That goal definitely stands out. Some of those things he does doesn't make sense to me. I look down the bench to talk and I go, did he just do that? What I thought I saw, you know? Those types of plays never cease to amaze us and what he's able to accomplish out there. In a season riddled with injuries, 35 different players have dressed for the Penguins this year. Mike Condon is the one many might have forgotten. He certainly hasn't. We had our chances throughout that game, and he made some big saves. So, yeah, I think that anyone who plays their former team or a situation like that, guys tend to get up for those games a little bit more. And we are going to a shootout. Bobby Ryan, he's a righty, coming to the Penguin net, goes to the forehand, he scores, he beats Murray. He was gone down, and Ryan gave him his best shot, it was a good one. Being back to back, sometimes you can kind of see as the game goes, your play starts to decrease the offensive zone time, all that kind of stuff. But I felt like in that game, we had a pretty good third period, a good overtime, and just weren't able to get that next goal. The next game is always the biggest. That was especially true for Mark Streit. He swapped jerseys and sides of the state earlier in the month and was already facing his old team for a second time. I was there for three and a half years and you know all the guys and then you face each other like a couple weeks after so it's a, <laughs> I'm not a big fan of it, you know, it's just a, an odd feeling. How you doing buddy? Can you all bro? Oh my god. It's not an easy situation, I'm sure, you know, playing against guys that he's played with for a while, but he's an uh, experienced guy, he's been around for a long time and, and, you know, a great addition for us. Brings depth and experience to our team and he can help us immediately and he's done that. Brayton Shen, hammered by Gustav Spear, home Shane Gustav Spear, as they pour it on. Sometimes perspective is the most important thing. So in the midst of a losing streak, the Penguins got some. And some new teammates as well. Jim Rutherford signed five Make-A-Wish kids to one-day contracts. Are you alright with all these cameras? Yeah. Nice to meet you. These guys can get a little, a little annoying sometimes, eh? A little bit? <laughs> oh, sorry. Pass it off all the way down here, give them a score. A score? Who's this? Who's scoring? The like Kessel probably? Goalie or forward? Forward. No, that's the perfect stick right there. Try that. That's got a little grip. Feel that? I like it. Yeah. This is the day that the Penguins have really been looking forward to strengthen our team on the stretch run. So we're really happy to have you guys here. Hope you enjoy yourself. It gives me great honor to do this with you guys. And we'll get your contract signed and get you going with the rest of the players. Okay? It's been incredible. Like All the players are very, very welcoming. They all talk to us. Everywhere I go, there's always players that are just greeting everyone and being nice and friendly. Okay, buddy. Take care. See you out there. There you go. Let's see if you can get him on the block side. All right, Flower, you ready? We should sign here to far away. <laughs> You know, for kids to look up to us and to want to be a part of this, I think it's something that puts things in perspective as hockey players. So, yeah, we're all pretty fortunate to get to do this and to be able to spend time like this with, uh, with kids that want to be here.
The numbers were adding up. Eight regulars were missing from the lineup. And with Chicago coming to town, it was time for the Penguins to see how they measured against the best team in the West. I think it's a good test for us. I think they're obviously top of the Western Conference, a team we kind of measure ourselves against. So no matter who's in our lineup, I think we're capable of winning, and I think tonight will be a good test for that. It's a hockey night in Pittsburgh tonight from the PPG Paints Arena in downtown Pittsburgh, VA. The National Hockey League presents the Pittsburgh Penguins and the Chicago Blackhawks. We had a game plan going into that one, and I think we kind of got away from it a little bit there. We wanted to shut it down and play a defensive style game for that one. And, you know, right off the hop, I thought it was kind of a little bit of a pawn hockey game. Curling around behind a back pass. Score! Hey, we got to get our four check on here, boys, eh? Oh, they got a man going to the net. They can't take it, but they went down. Lots of time here, boys. Lots of time here. Go! Grabbed by Wilson. Nicely feathered on to Crosby. Glides and hands to Kessel. Good read. Good play. Off of Bonnie and it comes to Carroll. Have a clean breakaway. Tanner Carroll to the net. Shoots and scores. Final score here tonight. Chicago 5 and Pittsburgh 1. Mike, I'm sort of wondering, do you feel like playing with confidence is an issue for your team right now? And, and if so, what can you do to sort of generate some confidence? Confidence is a fleeting thing. You can get it back just as fast as you lose it. That's what we'll do tomorrow. We're going to learn from this experience where we can see what we can take out of it. We'll try to point out some learning opportunities, and then we'll move by it and get ready for the next game. You know, we've got a good team. We've got good players. We believe in this group. We're obviously disappointed in the result tonight, but the belief we have in this group of players, that's unwavering. Hey, boys, come here real quick. So once we sling it over here, this third guy who throws a puck up, try to find that icer. Let's just do a couple of reps of that, and then we'll do a regroup, and we'll go quick up, and same thing against a three on two. You guys got it? Yeah, we got it. Woo! You know, guys are moving in and out, guys are getting injured, you know, sick, hurt, whatever it is. When that happens, it's hard, you know, you're not the same team, but that, that's not an excuse. You know, we have good players here, and we just kind of got to readjust a little bit. Ready, boys? Go. That's it, that's it, Quick. That's it, nice. Right up? Yeah. How's the melon? That's it, that's it, Shares. There you go. Nice, nice, nice. There you go. Just trying to hold you there. Making a 4-3, take myself out of it. We've had a tough couple games here, back-to-back -back games, but there's uh, you know, a lot of hockey left, and I think uh, a lot of teams are trying to clean up things this time of year, so hopefully we can... Uh, you know, play a little bit better and, and get some wins. Mike, will Jake play tonight? I'll see how they feel after the morning skate here, but, you know, they're highly probable. Kind of pains you out for a couple games. Does it sort of make you appreciate how beneficial it was for you guys? It sure does. You know, he's a veteran guy. He's played a lot of games in the league. He's everything that we expected him to be when we traded for him. When you lose him for a period of time, he's a hard guy to replace. Coming up, a 5-1 loss at the hands of the Chicago Blackhawks. The Penguins march to the road once again to take on the Rangers. Well, the Pens get some good news. Ron Hainsey and Jake Gensel will be back on the lineup tonight. Evgeny Malkin and Chris Letang, of course, not able to play. Losing a few games in a row, you want to get back on a winning note quickly, especially playoffs just around the corner. Crosby trying to stick one in and he scores! No, you didn't, Sid. No, you didn't. We had great goaltending and we had a good start, which always helps for us. I think that's one of the things that we've tried to improve on. Through 60, we end up tied at three. We're going to go to overtime. OT was crazy, up and down, back and forth, two and one, two and zero. <laughs> it was great to get the two points and to get a win. You ready? Come on, come here. Buddy, hey, relax. Man, I can't wait to see how big he is. Ready? Come, on, come down. Good boy. Oh my god. He's a monster now. Alright, let's go. Let's go, buddy. Come on, lady. 
Yo, bro. When was the last time you saw him? Was he like way smaller or what? Man, he was like this big. <laughs> He's pretty gentle though, actually. He goes one arm around the head. Yeah, he throws the old right hook in there and like headlock. Gigi's quick, eh? She's a klutz though. Oh, so is he, big time. We came here a couple weeks ago and there was like another full grown Newfie and they would run head first to each other and he would just get crushed. He's got a drool all over his face. Is that his own? Or is that Gigi? <laughs> That's from Gigi. These two are just on a date right now, I think. Oh, look at this little guy. Hey, bud. You see how small his legs are? <laughs> hey, what do you think the chances we could get him to run through the course? No way. They're too in love right now, man. I don't even know if Beckham would fit in here. Hey, can you go through? Go. Go get it. Gigi, come here. Nah, he made it. He made it. Oh, here we go. Beckham, come here. Okay, you gotta let him out now, though. We got a little pile up in here. Oh, G. <laughs> <laughs> and back. I think G would be like a small offensive defenseman. Yeah, like a puck mover. Yeah, maybe like a Schultz. -y. Yeah, like Schultz. -y. I would agree with that. He's definitely super laid back. Either a D or a goalie. You think? I think he might be Phil. Maybe Phil? He might be he Phil. He could be Phil, actually. That's a good one. I think he'd be a good net front presence, that's yeah. for sure. Tough to move in front of the net. They're just like all over the place, eh? Like I just want to know what they're thinking. Yeah. Like what's going through their head right now? And this is paradise, man. She's going to sleep for like four hours. Like he's going to be so tired. He might honestly sleep until tomorrow after this. This is like us in Vegas. It's a great day for hockey. This afternoon, the Penguins getting back on the winning track in their last game as they defeated the New York Rangers in New York. The Penguins had to go to a shootout to do it to snap a four-game losing streak, but they did just that. They have 105 points on the year. That puts them in third place in the Metropolitan Division, but only one point behind the Columbus Blue Jackets. Turn around and bouncing off the boards and shooting. Good save by Andy Lack. Rebound. Wilson drives in. He scores! Scott Wilson jams it in and give the Penguins a 2-1 lead. Line now picking it up and us. After playing New York, we thought we had found a kind of another element to our game and we wanted to bring that against Carolina. Wilson, a lot of speed there, giving the Canes some big time headaches. The Penguins, they have one more to go against Columbus Tuesday. Before the playoffs open. It will be at home or away. That's to be determined still. Back in front. Cheery again. Scores! A quick sharp pass into the Pittsburgh Penguins. Gets them their third goal. What did you think of your line the first couple of periods? Yeah, those guys make it easy to play with. Rounds is super solid. Archie's fast. Tonight we just tried to stay close in the offensive zone and have some second chances, so that was big for us. Hopefully we're able to keep it rolling tomorrow. The key come playoff time is building momentum from one game to the next. Something the Penguins were hoping to do against their likely first round playoff opponents. Home ice advantage under the balance. The fact that they're divisional rivals certainly brings a heightened intensity to the game, a heightened emotion. Obviously there's a lot up for grabs. It's a team that we might end up playing in the first round and we'd obviously love home ice and we'd love to beat them tonight. Line on. Here's Wilson with a butt to make Columbus go. Oh, shave my face with a rusty race. Brody Dustin on the way in. Andy and Dumo. Here we go. Andy and Dumo. Dumo! Heads up. <laughs> yeah, that's all right, thank you. Try not to let it happen again. Go, go, Andy. Come on. Got my old buddy, Steve Goal number 20 for Patrick Hornquist. Step up. Horse him. Jump him. You ready here in defense, eh? Strong side. With this big question, all right, I'm going to stay here. Right here. That's it. You got it. You got it, Dick. Crosby to Gensel. The Dublin. Score! Brandon Dumoulin gets his first goal in a 151 game. First 
congratulations. It's a hell of a win. We're going to have to play through a lot from now on out. So that's the mindset that we have to be in, and we're going to fight the fights we know we can win. Okay? Dumo, congrats on your first goal. <laughs> One week from the start of the playoffs, the Penguins were dealt some unsuspected and jolting news. One of their most irreplaceable players would not play again this season. Chris, you've been through so much. How tough is this one to take and what kind of keeps you going through these times? Right now, it's pretty hard to swallow. It was not expected. Yeah, it was going really well and it's just in the last week that it just blew up on me so it's hard but, but like I've done in the past I'm gonna put my energy in getting better and get back to where I was. This guy is a great teammate and I know how much his teammates respect him and his first priority is his own recovery. We'll have him around the team as much as we can. He's still very much a part of this team and a part of the fabric of this team's identity. Okay. Marcin, you, you guys are pretty tight. How has he been able to get through all this? How does he do it? He's strong, you know, because he's been through a lot and big things too. He's a guy who loves the game so much and it's hard on him to be sitting out and watching the games and all. I don't know, I feel for him. Obviously he's our best guy that we have, so we show him we can get the job done. Not one guy's going to step up and do it, you know, it's going to take a village to get that done, so we'll just move forward and hope for the best for him. Time waits for no one. So as the Penguins digested the news that they wouldn't have Chris Letang on the ice, they coped the only way they knew how, by getting back on it themselves. A three-game road trip was all that stood between the team and the start of the playoffs. I think we've kind of been in that mode for a while, fighting for points and trying to make sure that we play the right way, no matter who's in the lineup. I think you want to finish on the right note, positive note. You know, it's been a long season, but three games left, and you want to play the right way. The games that we have left, they're important games to some of these teams, and so they're going to be competitive environments. I think that's going to prepare us for that game one scenario, which we expect will be very competitive. Congrats, we just got home ice advantage. Whoa! We found a way. It wasn't the prettiest, but we found a way. Throughout the course of an NHL season, finding a way is applicable in many situations. On this day, the Penguins found a way to have a little fun. <laughs> you do that? <laughs> we win yesterday and then we have home advantage in, uh, against Columbus, but it's like we ha have fun today, you know, like a little bit uh, joking around, you know, it's like good good things before playoffs. Everybody likes it, it's all in good fun, and I think that's just an indication of the type of chemistry we have in our locker room. Look at this respect. There is none of it. I think the first five minutes is really important. Let's try to get momentum right away. Simplify the game, okay? Good, solid team effort here. Let's be good. When last we saw the Toronto Maple Leafs, the magnitude of the game seemed to get in their way, but they get a do-over tonight, needing a win to make the playoffs. With a chance, shoot it, he scores! Oh, and he's loving it right now. Absolutely loving it. Look at the smile on his face. Nylander blocked by Porter. Look at the score by Bozak. Crosby scores on the power play and a beautiful setup by Jake Gensel. Sidney Crosby scores number 44. Back for Gensel, the shot. Look out, it goes out! Casperi Capitan, I believe. Off the corner boards, Gardner to the front. Tipped in, they score. Sheary into the corner for Kessel to Crosby. Oh, what a save by McElhaney on Sidney Crosby. What a way to put an exclamation point on a game. All that was left before punctuating the end of the regular season was a game in New York. Despite their playoff position being set, this was an important game for many of the Penguins. 
And Ole Mata, his first game, he missed 25 after undergoing surgery to his hand. Christian Jari will be in his first game. He's going to start in goal for the Pittsburgh Penguins. Go, Jari. Stop the f***ing puck, man. Girardi pitches. Throws it towards the net. Glass is there and he scores. Oh, no, no. He might have one of those saves, Staggy. Jari comes up with that puck somehow. Easy game, eh, Jarris? I know how I'm getting dogged. I'm not on the power play today. Yeah! Pretty sure my mom thinks I can do it too. Oh yeah. Yeah, he's in my corner. Back for Sundquist, and then following on is Kunakel. The puck is still loose. Look at Horny. <laughs> Look at Horny. 82 games a year, you can't turn him off. We're coming your way. Please, I don't need these on shift. Oh, boy. And they score. Peace. Well, that is it. Regular season now in the rearview mirror for the Pens. They fall in New York tonight and finish the season with a record of 50, 21, and 11. Sidney Crosby looks like he has wrapped up for the second time in his career the Maurice Rocket Richard Trophy. I think it's kind of just happened that way. There is no real emphasis on, you know, changing too much. I think that I've been fortunate. I got some pucks in and around the net. So, you know, when that happens, I think you're more confident to go there and instincts tell you to keep going back there. You know, if the puck keeps going there. When the Penguins come out on Wednesday night against Columbus, they will be a team that's going to be rested, recharged, and ready to go. I don't feel any tiredness in this locker room. You know, the guys are excited. They want to get going. You know, a lot of the experts and the historians around the league are telling us that we can't repeat. My question to our guys is why not? Why not us? I think they believe we have what it takes, but once again, we've got to go out and earn it. Nothing is inevitable in this game. That's kind of the best part about playing hockey is leaving it all out there and hopefully at the end of the road you're able to win your last game. Sit pretty. Sit. Good boy. She's going to try and hide it. Wow, you crushed that whole thing already. Are you serious? Yeah. Dunzo. Eat it. <laughs> she doesn't know what to do. Look at her, it's just dripping. <laughs> Gigi. <laughs> you don't want to eat it? She's loving it. It doesn't even look good anymore, G.